plus is faster, guys. We cracked the code. I think Weibo would win today, guys. But Weibo giveth and Weibo taketh. So, it's one of those situations. <laughs> I think Weibo 3 1, yeah. As well, That's the one. <laughs> but Nymera, my biggest question is like, where do we go from here? Because it's just pocket pick after pocket pick, meta pick, but favorite here that's being taken away from each team. It is a lot. Of, it is a lot of these kind of uh, more specialized picks, as you're saying. It has kind of been Zeri and Aphelios meta and the LCL playoffs through that bot lane. As it stands right Consider now, we're going to get blue side bands for mid lane. I kind of like what, what we have here from blue. Just still want to have Alessandra removed. Oh, Rakan instead of Lissandra, okay. Let's see if your goat is gonna pick Lissandra. Honestly, something that I would like to see more of is just um, Twisted Fate. Oh, Jinx is on the buffed patch. In the league historically as Why was Gwen taken one to three? Because um Kesanta was picked. Oh, this is a banger. Okay. It has been really, really important for snowballing the game when you play around a lot of skirmishes. BLG, the first picks of the game were about this is a banger draft already, guys. From both sides, honestly. You've got yourself a thrash lantern to get maybe something like like a lease in out of problematic scenarios and of course that jinx as well but Weibo don't have a lot of AoE engaged they're playing around a yep. lot of picks and if On gets there first and he gets a hook that pick battle is also going to be contested from BLG they walk away from the draft with team fight answers and I think they walk away with some other answers to what RNG have put on the uh, not RNG it's hard seeing uh, Weibo on that I screen know. and Shahu we'll see what Weibo have put on the table bro when you've been here as long as I have as well like I've done it so many times during the split I even BLG just because I identify, you know, bin with Sooning, right? Bin with Which draft do you prefer? Mm. Honestly, I, 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 I kind of prefer red side. I kind of prefer red side, but ever so slightly. It's, it's, it's more of a... It, it, there's so much skill expression here, guys. There is so much skill expression here that... Um, it is... Definitely one of those player gap type of games. It's like there's there's room for mistakes on blue side. I feel like red side comp kind of plays itself. Like you have Blitzcrank, Annie, Wukong, Gwen, Zeri. That's a very easy draft to play. But blue side, you know if. It's like everything is so volatile. This is this is about to be one of the most volatile games of of all time. First time here in the crowd today. Jaios ring out across the stadium. And you're right. He looks like it has felt like <laughs> <laughs> That's a noise I like. Thank you very much Scarecrown 2. Appreciate it. Scarecrown 2, you know, there was this Let me tell you a story about Scarecrown 2, guys. It was a dark summer night and uh my car was frozen and I couldn't get in. Skick round two, he just walked up with his Lambo. He drove up with his Lambo and he parked his Lambo in a way where the, the exhaust was pointed right at the frozen area. He was aiming the heat that was and missing from the car. And he saved me. That shit was crazy. Thank you, Skikram. Appreciate it. Boom. It is. 
So, uh, normally these TV twos, you see a hook line and you go, okay, right, do have double ignites in this lane, particularly when you're going towards that level two, Blitz Frank Thresh. Sometimes they trade their skill shots, as you can see, Chris. I've seen enough Weibo tilted. <laughs> level up that death <laughs> yeah, speaking of, um, have those death sentences. Yes, sir. On had a number of games in this champion um, throughout the split, of course, and uh, Shun was playing a lot of those death sentences. Oh. Kind of I think Annie Raw is good this game. Oh, crispy. Light with the body block and the autos. That's pretty big for Billy Billy, honestly. I think that's favorite for Billy Billy. Konnichiwa. Looking for me. Today when I took my morning shit, I looked at the video on things you can't, you shouldn't do in Japan. When you visit. <laughs> hey, Granny. You wanna watch together? Come up in, my friend. I cannot sell level up to. That's good to see you either way. I hope uh, scrims are going well. I hope Soak is going well. I wish you continued success, uh, Granny. Tell us what you think about draft. I'm thinking red red side. I can go for some LCS games, I believe, if you're down. Yeah, for sure, for sure. Yeah, let's do it. But red side is very easy to play. I feel like blue side, you can fuck up so hard. <laughs> you make... You have to be so good to win with blue side. Yo. Agreed. And vision control, uh, obviously hugely important when you have big CC from pick kind of champions like this, the LeBlanc and the Thresh, Lee Sin, all really want to be kind of jumping out of fog of war, throwing a hook, throwing a skill shot, seeing what lands after that point. Um, in the early games, once you've hit all of your basic abilities, there's a kill threat across the board. How's Jinx Thresh been in LPL LCK? We haven't seen so much of it. I, I have no memory of it standing out. I'm trying to remember Jinx in my brain and I remember uh, Crowny Jinx, Reckless Jinx, getting jumped by whole Mad Lions. I remember a lot of Jinxes in, Mad, uh, in, in LCS. I'm trying to remember in my, in my brain. Jinx is in LPL. I think we had uh, in the Dam One series, I believe. Jinx lost. I'm just surprised Annie went through all the way. Oh. It's a very big price to pay from the Shai to be a part of this fight. Because they're not going to even get Drake over this, and he needs to base go top. And then Gwen can kind of decide what comes next. I think also, it's like, not a window here that the Weibo in leverage, because Annie is not 6, right? They're getting kills on the right person, though Dark Seal stacks is a pretty big deal. But a uh, big price to pay for... Um, yeah, it's like your goat only is level 5. Only on my screen, this uh, this hook hit. Check out the stun 3 with his W. That was a, that was a baby annual. Yeah, the Shai TP'd into this, by the way. Like, he just straight up TP'd. On his window to TP top. That's, it's, it's such a big deal here because like the wave is crashing top and he was ghost. Got something here, but more importantly, they got something through mid because Nymera, we come back to life 
and it was two for two, gold to leave. Yes, yeah, so I looked into the Jinx business and Jinx. This is mostly just uh, our boy double lift. Prince plays the Jinx. Yeah, it's 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 not that common in LPL and LCK. I could have sworn I remember Deft playing it, but uh, I'm I'm wrong. It seems. Actually, yeah, he did play it. He did play it into Zeri. A Jinx into Zeri doesn't sound that great in my mind. Like you don't have enough burst to to threaten threaten the Zeri, and think um, in a case where you're isolated in one v one, you can't really fight. I feel like Jinx needs to get ahead to be stronger than Zeri, but I feel like you have no realistic way of getting ahead. Zhao Leblanc is good though, so maybe he can do something. Just um, kind of lo losing hope here for our dear friend. Jinx outranges Zeri in lane and gets pushed and can also scale stronger. Yeah, but that's... That's not everything. You take cleanse when you there is CC on the enemy team that is very difficult to avoid. This was very strange. Very strange on many levels. Jahu was Zoom, Chinx was on base, Zeri was on Temple. Because uh, Zeri Blitz, they pushed out all the way after killing Trash. And then they just started Herald very late. They lost their window. Look at the situation. I think I think Zeri just has stronger bias. Oh, I, I just feel like she has stronger bias. This is a very, very nice bitty bitty draft case. We should just lean towards uh, simplicity always. Simplicity is broken. I think the tricky thing about Jinx is that she's very limited in what fight conditions she can actually reach full potential. Zeri has a lot of champions here that can buy space, and if she has champions that can buy space, mean she, means that she can jump her, and any close combat, uh, Zeri is going to always win against Jinx. I like Jinx a lot into Kate. Because Kate has to play by the same play pattern, and I think that Jinx can do better in that play pattern. But in the context of this game, right, it's like, there's so much that can buy space for Jinx. I mean, for, for Zeri. And Zeri can actually fight aggressively. And then I think, 
if if Zeddy can trade autos with Jinx, uh, like she is just going to win. Usually when we talk about scaling, guys, it's six items is really not relevant. It's like you talk about scaling in in essence around one item, two item, three item, and that's it. In a lot of cases, you don't even reach three items if the drakes are killed fast enough. You only reach full build in North America. This is also a terrible game to play against Hunter. I feel like if Gwen can lane, he cancelled it. I feel like every time we watch a Leblanc. Yo, um, hysterics. He looks like the man who, uh, what's his, what's his name? Who? I remember years ago. Thank you, Kasim. I think we need to account for Weibo's old man hands. They are playing young man draft. They're playing the player gap, individual gap draft. Still surprised, you know, the 4-5 bands we had Rakan, and then we had Vegar. So Annie got through. James Arthur. That's James Arthur, yeah. Coming up, that'll be in 15 seconds. If that one goes down, maybe Weibo, if they were to secure that, could get themselves a, uh, a charge into the mid lane out of turret. They played a shutdown draft. Blue side banned Rakan for five. Blue side is a shutdown draft. Do you give shutdown once? <laughs> F of the game. Siri Rakan is fine. It's not good to pressure lane, but just scales well. <laughs> the casters. <laughs> If Gwen can lane, Gwen will 1v9. I think Gwen is unbelievably OP. They're so confused. The she? The she? Alright. Gwen is. What draft is Gwen not good against? Can you guys tell me that? 
The Gwen is only bad if uh, her matchup is bad. But if she has good matchup, I think Gwen is one of the most OP champions of the game. Obviously, you don't want to play Gwen against, like, Kennen. Zaya not, bot lane is hard for Gwen. Are you trolling? You're actually trolling. Gwen is bad versus burst. What burst? She has a W. She's immune. Akali is good. That I agree with. Akali is good. Akali is good, I agree. But it's like very rare, very few champions. Once again, guys. In lane, you can counter Gwen very easily. I'm not talking about this. In terms of scaling, Akali is one of the better matchups because of her just trade pattern. Once again, uh, I, EK drama, you're talking about lane phase, you know? I don't know how many times I have to repeat myself that I say that you can counter her in lane phase, but later in the game, Gwen is one of the best scaling champions in the most contexts. And people are still talking about it. Like, ah, it's okay, you guys can have your own conversation. I'm going to start continue watching the game over here. Poke can be later, but in the context of how you say poke can be later is really not black and white. Because if it's like if I'm playing Gwen into heavy range champs, I can buy protobelt and I can clear sight easily. And if I'm first in area, you're not gonna break my position because Gwen W is really good against poke. I can choose my fights very easily with Gwen. So Steph Curry Sim is a is is a known troll around these areas. Gwen falls off of the two items. Yes, brought a belt on Gwen. Yeah, this is a great level on build. Just... You think Ziggs and Jace and Varos are good against Gwen? I've got news for you, my friend. They're not. Think about it like this, right? If um, there's a reason, it's like, is the best team comp in the world just Zerath, Ash, Jace? Because they have the longest range abilities in the game. Not really, right? Because there's a lot of elements in the game that matter. When when you're first into space, and you're first into areas because you're stronger on side, you are going to cut the range. There's a lot of compositions that don't need to pressure through mid. And the moment the enemy team is not standing on mid, mid and they're already in fog, how are you going to figure yourself out? Right? 
Keep in mind, if you are first into space, your range is increased. I can make myself way bigger than I am through the sheer force of fog of war. And this is a very important detail to remember. Very important detail to remember. If you see me, then you understand and you can clearly identify my sphere of influence. But if I am in fog of war, my my sphere of influence becomes... Yeah, there, there are champions that win side against Gwen, yes. There are champions that win lane against Gwen, yes. And that is where she can potentially find weakness. But in terms of raw scaling, she is up there amongst uh, some, some of the best champions in the game in terms of scaling. I could go so far to say that on a more consistent basis, Gwen scales better than Cassidy. I mentioned Kassadin because everyone associates Kassadin with the, 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 the scaling situation, you know? I, th I think Gwen has far more cases where she scales better than Kassadin. I would take Legion Castle over Gwen always. So that's where you're wrong. There's definitely cases where Kassadin is better. But I think more commonly, there's cases where Gwen is better. Yeah, it's a very hard game to play. Weibo back to the drawing board. Yeah, a lot of sacrifices need to be made for Kassadin to, be, to work, right? But obviously we are assuming that Kassadin is also picked in a good matchup, right? How much of League is draft, do you think? I think... Hmm, I should put a percentage on it. Like, the draft is the ticket to play the game, you know? But, in the end, gameplay is king. To put a percentage number on that? Hmm. Kind of depends on the meta, right? So in, in, in theory, the draft... The, the easier a draft is to, to play in, in order to, to win, the, the, the better... The better job you've done. But there are certain limitations to what you can achieve. I think a lot of you ones would decide on draft. I think that's fair, yeah. I think... I think Fnatic is a good example of picking up wins due to just better drafts. Because... I think definitely that Oscarine started to play better. I think that Ivan had some great games too. And Humanoid is Humanoid. But I think a lot of the wins that they took was through the sheer force of just having better drafts. That's like one team that comes to mind for sure. Predictions for Saturday, sa Sunday, Monday. We're gonna take that. Uh, like, I, I need to rewatch some games and uh, get my mind straight. But probably, probably my predictions will be centered around the favorites. It's like I think BDS will win this. I think Astralis will win this. Vitality will win this, and I think G2 will win this. But it depends on, uh, of course. 
depends on um Okay, we'll talk more about what, how the, I believe the matchups is going to do to play out later. Right now, there's there's no reason to predict anybody else but but the favorites. I think I would put my vote that, um, sorry, given that choice as well. This way, no pill is best of five, yeah. Who's favorite to win in Astralis vs. Fnatic? I think Astralis is favorite. <coughs> they've shown more depth, they've shown more, um, and just better play. Astralis is not an easy team to beat. This is the only thing that is a bit spooky, right? It's like they're, they're picking Z here for five. <laughs> yeah, I, I hope they think about more what they blind pick for, for mid. God bless leader, right? But blind picking Z like this, there's so many good answers here on five. But then you have drafts like this, right? Excel, Maokai, Heimerdinger, Jace. They have this romantic, romantic draft. Wow. Jace, Maokai, Heimerdinger. But Irelia cuts this into half, right? It's like Irelia on red side. You can flick Irelia to five. And then you pick have Irelia into, into Heimerdinger. And Maokai has a very predictable CC, so she gets W value. This is like a bongo, bongo Irelia spot. And you're sacking AD, right? You're sacking AD, so Severe Caitlyn is out and you have to play Jin. Just don't skill Q when you're playing Heimerdinger against Irelia. Just don't, don't put it down. This is also so good too. BDS recognized, your ass is just OP dude, we were never gonna get a 4-5, just pick a 2-3 <laughs> We can drop support, enemy blind pick Rakan We can play Renata, Soraka You can play whatever you want man No to lose We can play all the good stuff <sighs> Damn, Zaya is thick though. Jesus. Ah. Alright, guys, let me take a break, yeah?
Wait, what? Did the time? Fuck me, dude. Man. Ah, oh, she bad. Shit happens. I spilled. I spilled the water. I spilled the water over the floor. Gosh. Walking on my friend Who to say hello to They hate him in the old school I feel like this break has been so long, no? Bro, the LPL music is always like, am I in a fucking Suits episode or what? Mike. That's illegal, Mike. I have to do it for family. Harvey. What's your favorite show? My favorite show? Shit, that's a tough one. Shit, what's my favorite show, guys? Honestly, I really enjoy Narcos. I have a lot of favorite shows, but in this moment now, Narcos really came to came to my heart. How about you, Cranny? Are you a weeb? Oh, Peaky Blinders. Ooh, Peaky Blinders is a good choice. That's basically British narcos. <laughs> Tommy, I need cocaine, Tommy. 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 Courtesy of the Peaky fucking Blinders. Tommy. It's a great show. I love the pacing of, of Peaky Blinders. Like how it's like six episodes. Makes me want to start smoking. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> they look so fucking cool smoking. <laughs> That's very true. <laughs> That's a fucking Shelby. But the way it starts. I'm Billy Kimba. I run the races. It's it's just so good. <laughs> like the the pacing of the show is so good that everything is like building up. It's like a perfect. It's just a perfect storm, and then the drop is so rewarding. 
that one before. It was just so clean. And again, syncing up with Shun on plays like this, even catching out light like the Boom. initiative here, just running up to him. We have watched Misfits now. Again, that was great analysis. The Boys is a pretty decent show too. Bro, I started wa looking into pocket watches because of Piggy Blinders. Killian is. Killian is great. Tom Hardy is also really good. Killian is. Bro, I'm I'm looking forward to um, uh, the movie that he's making together with Christopher Nolan, Oppenheimer. Yeah. Yeah. Anyone seen Dungeons and Dragons now? There's a Peaky movie coming too, really? Really, really, really. Okay. I'll take it. Give me three hours of Peaky Blinders. Good morning, BM. It was a big draft gap in game one. Big draft gap. Zeddy got a little double kill. When I think of uh, the intro song, Red Right Hand, I always think of um, Swain, because he has a red right hand. <laughs> There was a tall, handsome man with a dusty black coat and a red right hand. He's legit describing Swain. Are you a Witcher fan? Um, not a super fan. I played Witcher 3 to completion. I watched the show. Honestly, I, I finished watching the show called The Girl Behind the Window of the Wall, something like this. Like, this is a mental, mental name. Let me find it. The girl, the woman in the window across the street. From the girl in the window. But it turns out it's just satire. <laughs> this is, apparently this is just satire. It is, like, I watched this, and I was like, some of the shit that I saw, it was so stupid. And I couldn't tell if it's satire or not. <laughs> I just had no idea that, like, it's, it's so, what was in the show that was so stupid? Basically, it's like, there's so many things that just made you like, oh my fucking god. Like, every time she realized anything, she would, like, I don't know if, if I... I don't know if I should spoil it. It's 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 pretty funny. It is pretty funny in hindsight. It is pretty funny. I don't I don't want to spoil it. It's, it's pretty recent, I believe. It's not that recent, but I, I I don't want to I don't want to spill the beans here. It's it's just it's just a parody on all of these like horror movies, you know. Okay, Weibo. Put some higher pry on Annie, please. Carsa Leeson, we put that on the bench, maybe. First pick Zeri, maybe. First pick Annie, maybe. The she, okay. Any jump scares? No, 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 no jump scares. What are Weibo bands? The Shy for sure has watched my gameplay. Holy shit, imagine get, giving Tabe's team Annie. How can you give... Bit, while BLG 
just go back to what they know and love. Nymera, the Zeri was so good in game one. It's always good for Elf. It is. Hello, Dogbeat. I think Jace is pretty strong, but... Okay. Let's go, Maokai. Yes. Varus, 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 Varus. Leblanc. Yeah, go to Leblanc. Your goat. It's a great level on game. Nah, it would be something as well. We've seen this a couple of times. The Yordle v Yordle battle. And okay. Pre buff. Ben smoked these cannons with Nar. In my mind, if there was ever a level line game to play, this was the one. You have Lee, enemy is um, Cannon. Any idea why Kama isn't played in Pro? Let's think about this. Hmm. Where would I see Kama top? The Kama mid matchups are not that great right now. Oh, Kama could be played, I think. Kama could be played. Little 5 pick Kama sometimes. <laughs> Kama is just not bad. I, I, I have to admit, I'm not so sure why people don't play it, but I feel like everything else is just better. I think, I think everything else is just better right now, currently on bot. Wow, he goes Silas. Wow, okay. It is your goat after all on Silas. Have you watched Taboo? No, I got kind of bored of it. I don't want to look at this incest TV show, dude. Uh, they're playing blue side, so they are not they are not uh, last picking bot to give them priority. They are picking bot because they want to give mid mid jungle top priority. But in my mind, hmm. I think this is a little bit better than the previous game. You find it sad. Why would you find it sad? What does it even mean, you find it sad? I don't know what it means when you say you find it sad. Like sad as in... It's the same to you as watching like Bambi's mother die or... What's uh... What's sad? What's a boy doing? Hello, thank you. 
top lane feels a little bit egotistic from Bin, so we're going to have to see if he continues his form from game number one because game two, a whole different ballpark here in our round three of LPL playoffs. Is Annie being picked so much? Wonder why Oriana isn't picked against it? Yeah, Oriana is very good against Annie, but sometimes, in some cases, it is about draft structure. Maybe the enemy is holding Annie flex to, to support. And uh, then picking Oriana can be worse. But definitely there's cases where um, Oriana can be played into Annie. I think there's a very hard matchup for Annie. From BLG towards that top lane. A lot of time you can do that to try and catch out someone who's stood in river and also to get a ward in that top lane brush. Now we did talk about the Kennen being a good matchup into the NAR. Typically, NAR has been counterpicked by Kennen. X picks are so rare in pro play. You can kind of um, shift that matchup a little bit more towards that NAR though is by allowing them a bit of brush control where they can kind of get some auto trades in, pop out of uh, Minion Aggro by going into <laughs> one of those brushes. And yes, that side. The base HP definitely helps. I, I was going to say, that is an ambiguous side because is it for BLG? Is it saying the rest of BLG should carry on? I mean, on carry them in game number one. Sure. <laughs> so oh, yes, it's it, keep calm and on carry. Oh, sorry, and, we got it the wrong way around. And carry, carry on. Yeah. <laughs> They kind of pretend to be sick. No, they were very sick. Yeah, I kind of want to hear the chicken. I've only ever been to the, LPL the chicken sounds <laughs> Viego too. Honestly, guys, this might just be a Weibo, a Weibo like a Billy Billy <laughs> to zero. This is your moment. <laughs> that was my that was my best moment in LPL. I think more importantly though, watching that live, that was that was a banger. It is um it's a great experience because I mean people would know from overseas, but again, LPL fans uh, I think global fans And before Weibo just three zero guess. Right? They can't go and, and watch these games in person. Is that real? World, but they there's so many teams in the LPL you don't get the oh, full so representative. Many. You know, you miss so out many on stadium the games too, actually. The fact oh, yeah. that you can travel to all of these different stadiums, and you've got like the you've got like the Shanghai one, uh, you've got like Suzhou as well. So many of these different arenas around. You have like home arenas for some of these teams too. That's an experience which is very hard to replicate uh, across other um, other leagues and other titles and stuff like that as well. But LPL fans, they uh, they definitely make the most of it too because you know, you kind of set up this arena, these stages to kind mm -hmm. of have these great events on, but then you also have the audience really commit to it. You've got all of these LED signs, you've got all of these yeah. kind of community uh, <laughs> Bitcoin, the well. trust the, the boys. The references, the map, the C C C. Kind of supporting their team. I mean, again, like the the signs that aren't available. The winner of this faces. Shit. Let me just look that up. I want to say JDG, but is that true? Yeah, they face JDG. It is, it is imposing, it gives a real sense of like circumstance and like this grandeur to it, but it is villain chairs. They really are, and again, they're bangers, so <laughs> uh, props to whoever did the chair design. It's like every player has wings or something, I don't know, like the Galio wings, maybe. That's what they were going for, but hey, we are back in the Summoner's Rift, and Nymera, we were talking a little bit about the emphasis changing from BLG, you know, maybe having to be a little bit more proactive here. Uh, for cause I like Red Side, once again. But uh, let's see how they survive the matchups, because the matchups are not easy. We have uh, Silas into Jace, but Jace went uh, face rush. He doesn't want to make this guy bleed.
E start from Yagao, going into bone fighting though from Jace. Um, of course, we have seen a lot more Jace in this mid lane. Jace has typically been uh, fairly... Yeah, strong. the, the blue side has winning matchups across the board. But if uh, they are not ahead later, then GG. Jahu is playing phase rush. I guess Light just doesn't want to play Varus. Is Phase Rush really that bad? I think it's not that good here. Oh, matchups are really good for Weibo here, so maybe if they can leverage and create advantages, then game will be easy. It's like Billy Billy is very, a very playing a very romantic comp in the way that you know you can fight and you can engage and you have a lot of tools, but it is very difficult to survive early game here. The one caveat here is that Leeson can find ways to break these matchups. That's like that's that's the beauty of having like Leona bot and Silas on mid. That um Leeson can actually find gank angles and uh, Maokai Not the strongest to pressure the enemy jungle, you know. We watch e EMA Masters? Maybe. Depends on how it coincides with everything else. There it is, that's the gank. That's a... That's the neck breaker right there. <laughs> this is very bad. That's what we mean, guys. What a gank. That was a really good gank, actually. I'd feel safe there if I'm Jace. Not gonna lie. My Mauka is in river, my Thresh is in river. I have full vision, and I get ganked like this. The Shai is on some smoke here. from Jao. I'm not gonna lie, this this game is looking mighty over already. Steph Curry Sim does it again. Steph Curry, you've done it again, my friend. You've done it again. It's time to not play shutdown champs. 
is this the real start of the playoffs for from Yagao? Had an incredible series versus Arsenal. Okay, Steph Curry, Sim, don't, don't incriminate yourself, my man. <laughs> Did both RNG and Jaho lose with roster move? If they lose this series, yes. If they make it to top 4, I think it's okay. <laughs> Police can't touch me, I'm in Romania. <laughs> hmm. <laughs> hmm. Quite the bold statement. Yeah, Zhun has been playing really well. Let's be honest. That mid gank was really nice. Really, really nice. And then Zhao getting rooted by that was very disappointing. Is it good for heavy lane prior team to be down 3 kills and both neutral objectives in 9 minutes? Yeah, it's really good. It's really good. It's really good because now they will be really motivated to play better because uh, they're behind. It's just... Uh, it's just special tactics. Real voice. Zhao Long Bao. I think Zed is a bit OP. You can like check bushes. Your Q range is pretty decent. Your spells are all valuable. Your bases are all good. Like you, you, you feel strong on every base with Zeri. Every base feels good. It's like you buy a Vampiric. Strong. Berserk Grief. Strong. Finish. Uh, shield Ball. Strong. Second item. Strong. Third item. Strong. It's like. Her pacing in a game is insanely good. Insanely good. And she doesn't have a lot of bad matchups. She just doesn't. And you can play her with most supports. The AD carry item changes was a big buff for Zeri too. Dragon and BLG have an item lead yet again. 
They do. It's a point of power, as we said. Early spiking item from the Silas is not stacking up with the Rod of Ages. And this is one of the reasons Weibo can't pull the trigger. It's very scary for them. If the Gao is just holding up above them, if they can steal that Malachi ult... How do you approach this? It's like you have to hope that they burn everything to try to kill Karza, and he doesn't die. That's like the way. This is ever for Silas, by the way. Like, my man's muscled up. Maybe if Casa W's, the Silas ult. Okay, Flash for Leona ult is good in the short term. Ah, guys, he got my ult. What can we do now? It's also a good drink, at least, and like, there's no way you contest. Your goat. Have the conscience to not necessarily overforce. And the stands way above. They're outside a river, looking maybe for a steal. They have the lantern to try and get into the pit and look for the. Hmm. Uh, they pull it out as well, yes. Oh, they come into the fight too. Every champion on the team can actually jump over walls. They have Rift Herald as well, placed on mid. Billy Billy's got this in the bank, guys. Adam is the shy currently, who wants to isolate the 1v1? It depends. Huge soul. Double matchup will just be harder from now, it's like... The weakness of Kennen is he can't really itemize in a way that it's going to... It's like, sure, maybe you could go like Rift Maker this game. Like maybe it could be like one of those Rift Maker games. Nah, On is just the best player in the world. Flash is still the jack sounds okay, but also sounds very premium. It's more important to get yourself items that are gonna get you to the high levels. Night mice, armor, MR, and divine. I think if you're winning games, itemizing Nash's Tooth, Lich Bane on Jax, probably these are games where you would win itemizing anything on Jax. Well. Okay. Ah, Billy Billy's composition will just completely take over now. Okay, that's one. Ch Jinx reset. Alright, big, 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 big. I will get a replay because I kind of missed how this played out. Still, it isn't the end of days. Like, Zeri got first tower, but. Colors popped for both ADs. Happy to see Cole more often purchased, as you say, like a filler buy. I think it's good. I think it increases your odds of. Um, I think sure this was poorly played. Jay should be dead here, in my opinion. Then we just have a. Uh, okay, this, this was well played. This was well played.
You know, for Weibo, they might don't, catch don't up a little that. bit to the don't goal. Give me but, hope. <laughs> I mean, Nymera, the, the problem is we're still looking at a Jace that's been trailing Yagao and trailing Shun, right? We're still looking okay. at that have had I think Weibo need to go all in here on this fight. This, this game number two. We have to remember that the strength you talked about is still. I think it's time to, to all in here, Weibo. And a certain ultimate to be really, really okay. impactful. And that's going to be a cannon ultimate and a cannon flash. There is no exhaust on the side of BLG. What they do have is the Go all in, baby. Take the cannon out of the fight or to Who scales better? As it stands, though, you guys the one that's making the first mistake. Mm. Get out of this ult. He's going to use it in response. You guys come in, but the twist advance. I think it depends. I don't think it's so black and white. Huge, 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 huge. Very big. They're pursuing this, but Elk still has ult on. They got the trash, but they get another Zeri reset here, maybe. Wow, Billy Billy. He solo bullet. Binovich. Breaking Benjamin. A little solo ball in the top side. The way of ben. He takes out the trash and takes himself another kill. Shows that's for a solo ball, please. <laughs> that is all she wrote, guys. This looked like such a good start after this kill, but they needed to regroup somehow. Here, yeah, the fact that Chris gets picked off here on the side is a very bad thing. It's like, it's quite random, but Chris gets touched by the Maokai ult that the Silas sent out. So he got rooted on top of this pink ward, and he got killed. Okay, your goat is dead. Nice, we don't get to see the 1v1 kill. No Nash, no nothing. I don't know if I'm a believer in this push, guys. This is terrible, man. Like, look at your bot wave, your sieging. It's Messi, Ankara Messi, Messi, Ankara Messi, Ankara Messi. <laughs> now why are they sieging a tier 2? Guys, they're sieging a tier 2 mid when tier, tier 1 and tier 1 is alive. I want to see chat there for sure saying Ankara Messi. <laughs> Ankara Messi, Ankara Messi. <laughs> Messi, Messi, Ankara Messi. <laughs> <laughs> Everyone's not the same. That's, that's hilarious. I like that. <laughs> yeah, goat. But why are they sieging mid, guys? This was a terrible siege, guys. Terrible, terrible, terrible. Like in this moment, all you need to do, fix bot wave. You got the kill. Take it easy. Take it easy. Very nice limp there from Billy Billy, right? Like Billy Billy recognizing their strength in terms of how they fight. Like details like that makes me feel always like LPL is a little bit stronger than LCK. It's like they, they took, they sold the 4v3 through the trash punish and here they recognize wow these guys are sieging they are not allowed to do this their cooldowns are down we are flanking they have a very good understanding of of, of champion strength and champion viability in in the context of fights i i, I don't get that same level I, I don't get that same feeling when i'm watching uh, the lck but Could you make the counter argument that is Weibo play, playing poorly? Well, yeah, what one requires the other, right? It's it, it, both are required. Obviously, like I, I, I felt, I, as I said in the game, I was like, why is the season tier two? Um, it, it's obviously a mistake. 
But that's not an, that's not a counter argument. themselves a bit of a lead for a little bit of this game it felt as soon as they got themselves a look in around when vlg overstepped from that mid lane 2v2 that was their moment blink and you miss it though wave bro they've taken another couple of bad fights again it feels like those inhibitions that that angel on the shoulder has taken a bit of a vacation because it's only those uh, dastardly devil thoughts saying oh. you must fight all the time and then not leading them oh to a victory oh at this god point. oh god you know what you can't call this play a track this is a bin. This is the bin. The one that takes it all in. What did I just listen to? Flames not. 5 0 on 1. Uh, bin okay. now. Another 1v1. Here Round we go. Two Come fight. at me, bro. Let's go. 15 versus. Joe doesn't win. My man hunts alone. You do not mess with Giga Bin. I missed the solo kill. to be a team fight menace and he's been able to achieve basically none of that this top lane matchup we saw how it went against rng bin got the advantage bin ran over the series the shy he's looking probably towards game three now and thinking what can i do which i couldn't do in the first two because you're going to be on match point it's going to require a reverse sweep at this point is shahu teleports on vision that good enough bm Weibo haven't done their sweeping and with hex tech soul sitting up and available they are struggling to get towards the river line, Nymira. With even the oh, shy walking no. up in the fog of war. No one's gone to duck, but Finn chasing him down. Auto, auto, auto. Even the house comes at him. The shy left with no money, no hope. And Weibo Gaming are meant to be our fourth seed. But Billy Billy want to make a return to the top four themselves. It is. And in doing so, taking down a team potentially that has so many huge names on it so much history to it they have four international champions at points in their career on the other side of the rift yep. but you really wouldn't tell it from the way that blg just don't care about the nameplates they've been playing their own style of league of legends whatever it is in the draft that they put it through they are versatile they're powerful and they're going oh, once no. again for these 1v1s finn is not taking prisoners he doesn't care about do you think in hindsight it's fair to say that the shy was actually carried by Baolan? <laughs> What's that cut? It cracks me up. <laughs> True and basic. But Ben 1v2 sees it. Alright, let's see what happens in the next game. Why is schedule losing his mind? In that fight, death across the board. Take note. This is how BLG find themselves into victory. To be fair, by the time the shy started running it down, like the game was pretty over already, guys. It's like the shy is the type of player to elevate risk when um Do you go towards this baron? They've given It's like when when the shy when the shy is in when he thinks the game condition is losing, he's just going to try some dumb shit. No, they can win. Weibo can reverse sweep this. <laughs> Weibo can reverse sweep this. <laughs> 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 
I honestly think Weibo would lose this. That is a jungle and a support who have no damage to their name. Bin looking towards that 1v3 and saying, oh, this isn't fair. You, you, you're gonna need more people, right? And that means that once again, BLG, they give the best of two bad situations to Weibo and say, what are you gonna do? Give up the Baron to try and kill the side lane. They're going five people towards oh, yeah. the NAR. Bin wins these guys. Bin wins these. No Come on, Bin. Go on, Bin. Go on, Bin. Come on, Bin. Come on, Ben. Come on, Ben. Come on, Ben. Come on, Ben. Yeah. Woo. Damn, son. Where'd you find Ben? Options against it. And now onto the base on Death Thor as Weibo takes down. They have the reverse switch from now because BLG a knock on the door of a game number two win. That's a beautiful off from your gal as well. The AP wow. hurts the damage hurt from everyone. It's a swift breeze to knock over Weibo and BLG coming through as the fifth seed. That's insane, good Kedro. My lights fell over. <laughs> My lights fell off the table. Dude, been bending over the shy. The Weibo 3-0 begging. Holy shit, bro! Everyone's just a Weibo fan. <laughs> Why? It's like being a fan of Ferrari, then. I think I made a <laughs> stream title. It's supposed to be... <laughs> Weibo 3-0 lost. Fuck! Let's see how I dominate. That is analysis from Nightmare right there. Bro, is this, is this uh, our dominant crotch? How is he sitting, bruv? Is this leg in the air? Bro, how's my man sitting, bro? Bro, cover up your sh sh meat. <laughs> He's, he's on Discord right now. I feel like On is just Hillathong. That's how you have to look at him. You can't look at him in the context of like, how good is he compared to other supports because it's just like, it's random how he's gonna play. But he's somebody who could be the best support you've ever seen. And he could also just be the worst support you've ever seen. I mean, that's the thing. BLG look like pushovers in the roster, but are performing He doesn't see. He doesn't see guys. I really struggling to put two and two together. Yeah, I guess BLG is more than the sum of their parts. Dun, dun, dun. Is that I Andrew? I guess I guess I only checked and he just came back. What was his name? Barry? What's the name of uh, Mr. Beast? Mid Beast. <laughs> <laughs> Jared from Subway. Coma, let's check out Coma. I hate to be that guy, guys, but uh, I smoked the shy. I mean, Coma when he was here. Oh, he's losing HP too. Okay, never mind. Wasn't Jared the nonce yet? That's... You know shit's bad when the no mic grind stream start from pro players? <laughs> yes.
both of these expanded champion pools. We're seeing a lot of comfort picks. Shons. Bro, Shons is absolutely popping off, dude. What is, what is he touching his own face, face with? Non, avant que le set sort, il propose de le tester. Non, bread. It looks like, looks like ice cream. Et euh, après, ça dépend à quel point je tryhard. Your chance is absolutely popping off, dude. We're just uh, clicking all of the streams for content. What if I do a podcast episode with, with just me and Broxa and it just sounds like two digger dudes talking? Holy, it's Broxa on Leeson. Give it to us. Give it to us. Come on, Broxa. Game over. Give us a little kick move. You have flash, you have wards. Do it to him. Do it to him, baby. What? Ah, he's way too try hard, man. Give us a little move. Give us a move. Give us a move. Give us a move. Okay. See ya. Okay. GG. Ah, after some really doomed games, this felt great. Feels good to be back on track. Damn, that is five that looks sick, by the way. Yo, Broxa's design on the stream is crispy, now. man. Big up, Broxa. Bro, the, the, the design looks really good. What's the time? 12.40. I need to bring some food in here. Give me, give me one minute, okay? One minute. I just need to... Bring some food. I want to buy Broxa yeah, brand cigarettes. <laughs> Is that Chap GG? <laughs> Yo, Fluffy Zombie, thank you very much. Appreciate it. Sneaky LOL. Wow, what the fuck is this game? Oh my god. <laughs> the blight of the elixir. It all ends here. Oh, and he now. is a good guy. Uh oh. Wait. Wait a sec. If Holy, it just popped Viagra like that? Unlimited power! Wait, just kill him. No! Uh-oh. Lupu could have just ended the game right there. Wait. What the fuck? He turned into a furry. What the fuck is this game? No, no. What the fuck? He becomes. Holy. Donnell is looking mighty different in this setup. Bro, this guy's music is way too loud, dude. Oh, wow. Oh, my God. Oh, my God, man. I'm eating soup. Did I really miss my outfit on both? What on earth, man? Well played by Thrush, though. Insanely good uh, play. I'm here eating soup. I answer that so bad, either. One more? Close. Fuck, man. EOS is so good.
Bro, I couldn't listen to this. Jesus. How can you listen to this, bruv? I feel like I need to, like, murder someone. My man, my man showed his skins to prove the fact that he's been playing for many years. And then I'd appeal it and it would be resolved. But what I found super interesting is that Riot support team shifted the reasoning behind the ban and then pretty much stuck with it. By the way, before we go any further, this is just a theory. There's no way I could ever prove it. But this is a calculated way <sighs> from the evidence that I got. As shown in this clip, I was immediately banned after playing this game. And when I logged in, it gave me a game ID for which it says that I was banned. And if you look at that game ID and compare it to this one, clearly a game of Smite Teleport Sign. There's no denying that. Immediately after, I then submitted my first ticket to try and appeal the ban, and as shown, I was under the impression that the ban was for Smite Teleport Scion. This isn't the first time we've seen a ban like this for playing off meta. If anyone is quite okay, we have unwinnable top matchup with Cassante versus Darius. We have Zerath mid versus Victor. And then is there a card? I wonder how this game's gonna play out. Hmm. Jesus! I'm so bored! Bro, but Tyler 1 has so much more power, no? Too, man. Let's go. No, no, this is good. What are these pants my man's wearing, dude? What's Yasu wearing, dude? Yo, Tyler One's got a thick ass. I got a thick ass too, honestly. Casual Leblanc Panther. Panther care. Please, please, Panther care, please. Yo, what's Eminem's camera movement, bruv? Bro, what is this? What is this skin, dude? <laughs> Holy shit. Surely you don't... Nah, TF Play got absolutely shot on, by the way. He got absolutely shot on. Oh! Ooh! Ooh! Let's go, baby! Ooh! That was kind of nice. Oh, it's gonna be a double kill with the Q flash. Boom. Geometry. You. Yeah. Alright. I didn't. Don't flip that. <laughs> that yeah was. <laughs> Guys, it's gonna come a day where Ben actually cuts his fringe and then his eyebrows are completely unleashed. I got a bit of static on the mic. I can say, but hey, Ben getting. What did you say to me in that break as BLG won? MVP is who? It is, uh, it's not been. It's Elk who walks away with that MVP for game two. Uh, on that huge kill for Fertbeer. But this background music always makes me think about... And you know what? Every so often, you gotta throw something this guy's way because look at the damage, look at the kill participation. It feels like one of... It's, it's, it's a two-part job, right? Where you have so much pressure coming in from one side of the map on Bin, taking up that side lane pressure, that it forces Weibo into awkward fights where Elk can clean up. Now, I think that Bin had a great game. I really think we should start shouting that more as well. But Elk cannot forget to praise this AD carry of BLG. And, uh, yeah, I mean... Now this kind of brings up some extra questions as well, because we have talked about... 
in regards to a lot of our drafts in terms of we talked about the cannon it wasn't really there in game one and Weibo they picked it up for game two and it didn't really work out as well for them as we potentially would have liked but this Zeri has been a big fixture across of course the globe but when you sure. have players like Elk, Light, of course Gala in the last series as well was a really big player of that and later in we'll get players like Ruler, Leave, kind of pull, putting on their Zeri shoes as well a lot of teams eh? have to start wondering whether you have to give um what is that? Some extra value as well. We haven't seen a big amount of changes in the bands from a lot of our series so far. I'm this going to be desk for finals only. Have to feel because it can clean up so easily once you start. Really? I even look at this one, right? He kind of hops over a wall. My man's on some running. smoke here. How do you win a fight after that point? You got to start wondering: Do we have to let this thing through? <laughs> I think the answer is no, right? Unless Weibo are willing to pick it themselves, like. We know Light has a, a versatility of, of 80 carries of, of champion pool, but overall, let's be real. This pick, along I'm on for finals, guys. I'd say, you know, like flipping top lane matchup or maybe not getting something as confident. Maybe the pick order here from Weibo Nymera has a big impact on what's going on in these games. And I'd also say it doesn't fully matter either because, you know, even that time, the cannon didn't work out in the lane. Like the Jace didn't get to play his range. Uh, you know, Xiaohu overstepping. I think Weibo today, just a bit of a bad day so far, and it's something that's a little bit disappointing. But hey, for BLG, now on match point, a 2-0 start is better than we could have ever expected. And BLG going from strength to strength. I think now in terms of adaptation from Weibo, probably I think they should try out a red side draft. I think that you can't rely on the shy blind picker champ. The, a matchup in top side. We've seen that with the cannon not work out, the Cassante not work out as well. Bin has a large enough champion pool and definitely the hands and the form today to play through counterpick matchups, regardless of where that is in the draft. I think on red side, you maybe you can pick up something even like an Annie pick to just say, look, we can flex that between mid lane and support. We know that Xiao, who has played a number of games in that champion, just give them some flexibility rather than just kind of opting into letting BLG yeah. being the team that can flex around and use their larger champion pools. Maybe maybe give themselves like bot early and do what the rest of the teams do. I mean, I, I didn't hear side selection here, Nymera, but for Weibo, and when you're playing with people like the Shy and Xiaohu, I would assume Red. He looks like he owns a boat. It plays towards your strengths, right? I know in the regular season, Weibo played more blue, but red was something as well that they also flourished on. It was quite even in that regard. So I'm kind of curious to see what happens here. Um, because going into game three, like backs against the wall. I don't know if Weibo have it in. I'm going to be quite honest. I don't know if this really oh. feels like a game five or even a game four at this point. I'm wondering that myself because how do you break the you know, the momentum, the winning streak now, because BLG only lost their very first game against RNG. They've now taken three wins there, two wins um, against Weibo. They're on a five-game win streak. So you have to break that kind of confidence. It's a thing which is going to know about man. Uh, a lot of traditional sports as well. Once you start hitting those winning streaks, you start to get into those motions of what you need to do to win. It's just very second nature at that point. The things where you kind of get these better instincts about what fights you should be taking and which ones you shouldn't. And as we've clearly seen in that last game, particularly, and even in that first game after Xiao, who got his double kill and then couldn't play out that lead, it feels like Weibo, those instincts are not on point yet. They're taking fights which they're absolutely losing. And yes, oh, yeah. LG, they overplayed that one fight in mid jungle, but that's been one blemish on what has otherwise been a very clear clean playoffs run so far and that was still Weibo getting caught out it was just the fact that they managed to outplay oh, just luckily right? like, worked again, out yeah yeah that's right it's still their problem man it's still their problem and you know I feel like Weibo need to chill out take a step back have a sip of tea <laughs> chill out and honestly just regain that confidence not only between mid jungle but also, you know, playing towards topside, I, I feel like we've talked a lot about Light and Chris being quite solid and consistent throughout the split, and even throughout these two games, they have been to some regard. But I <laughs> just, I don't know, man. It just, it, it hasn't been enough to lean on, and through the solo lane, through Just take a snapshot right now, everyone watching at home, and just title it just like two casters try and just lose their minds over figuring out how oh, the man. heck you go through this series 2023 colorized um it's not the most intuitive title but it's pretty much what we've got with because this series has really taken a turn for the worse for weibo because they can't deal with this top side if you could in an ideal world 
I'm trolling so fucking out. Maybe they get an individual advantage, but they don't impact the team fights. They don't impact the game. We saw that in game one versus RNG when Breathe kind of nullified um, the Gwen matchup and just said, well, that's okay. We'll it's okay. We'll I don't read chat for moves. Getting ahead on the other side of the map. That would be great because in this game, you could just say, let's just give all of our resources over to Light while the Shy just kind of sits there and just loses individually but wins in the team fights. That hasn't happened this series. I think you have to try and put something more into been early into the game because as we've seen once he gets individual advantages he can take on five whole enemy team members and walk away alive and again been just showing how catastrophic he can be folks game three coming up it's match point for blg let's see what changes Wavo, do go to the red side so namira my rantings weren't for nothing as zeri gets banned away here we go here are the changes but Vi left open, very dangerous. We might see that as a first pick coming through. That's the first time that we've seen that be allowed through the bans in this series so right. far. It allows you to Let's play this shit, guys. aggressive mid-jungle combinations, which we've seen be the key to a lot of the meta so far. Even really trumping stuff like Lee Sin, which is still available. We've got Lee Sin, we've got Wukong on the other side. What is Caster feeling? On that side, we might see ourselves a... We can see Syndra, we can see Ari, we can see Talia, we can see Vagar comboed up from Yigao for uh, that kind of Vi combo. On the other side, we have talked about the power of Annie being strong in mid-jungle 2v2, being strong mm -hmm. in the support role. You can lock this in maybe with something like a Lee Sin as well and threaten strong mid-jungle 2v2, but just having this for your flex... Back to Annie! Allows you some of that ability to... Right just through the draft. As we've been asking oh. for from Weibo. As Diego gets locked in, this was the ban from Weibo. Two games in a row on the blue side. So they obviously want to play a very different style. For BLG, no Zeri up and available. Let's see what they do, Nymera, because already trying to flex around with their potential AD carry slash mid options if we're looking at the Tristana. And Elk is someone, again, with old Mr. Reliable. You expect nothing less than something like the Aphelios that he's never died on. This entire we finally get those chicken sounds, yes. Ah, ah, ah. We've got the uh, Thrash Phalios coming out from BLG's bot lane. Elk in the series versus RNG showed Is VIB1 good? The Not a fan, no. Well. We've seen both, uh, him I think it's Eagle less relevant when Zed is out of the picture, yeah. but let's see what your goat gets here. The issue is, your goat is not going to be able to play Ari, not going to be able to play Talia. Because we'll I'm pretty certain that's going to be the bans, but maybe they just ban Gwen as well. Because they blind pick Cassandra. I could swear she was crying as well, seeing the Cassandra yeah, maybe locked too. in. Uh, I think Weber fans, you know, at this point. Yeah, Goat wants to play Italia here, dude. No, Ari. But they're gonna ban Gwen. So he's gonna get one. Yeah, Goat. Yeah, Goat is gonna get uh, Ari or Italia. A good champion for Elk historically as well. As for Weibo, they're trying to give a bit more comfortability to the Shy here on this Cassante top. Flop plays. That is the least confident message I've ever seen in my life. Some of those counts pick matchups can come in from Bin, but the Bin, Bin just has such a large champion pool. What are you going to do with this top lane matchup? Feels like even if you get rid of some of his primary, primary champions, he'll have something else to bring to bear. Now, um, of course, you can take away something like that, Jax, as well. Of course, that will be a ban there. Cannon up and available. It's not necessarily the best thing into the Cassandra. Easy one is like, guys, we can't touch so your yeah, goat with the uh, bans. We want to see mm -hmm. some more sidelining, seen some Conqueror with Heart Steel. There is some weird tech out there, folks, but have to see what Bin True. chooses first and foremost. Uh, I would expect the AD carry to come in here. Bin Cannon. Preserve that Annie being flexed between mid and support, but maybe we'll choose that a little later. It's actually not going to be that flex. I like the bans from Billy Billy 4 5. You see that. Not often, right? And especially for someone like Light. I mean, I already know what they're going into the bottom lane, but that Nautilus is going to be coming through anyway. And especially for Chris, who's been a pretty big Nautilus Leona. Uh, you know, we saw the Thresh earlier on as well. This has been some of his highlights, but today just hasn't been there with some of the engages. Let's see if the Nautilus changes. That's the cannon, baby. Cannon, not strictly something we talk about up in the top side. Or won't be anyway just yet as you can. Mm. Picks up his Vega. This is how he mm. gets RNG as well. At least mm. I BLG are just going back to comfort and after playing. Bro, I always forget that Vega exists, man. Nah, top. Look at this stone cold killer. Ready to handle this dinosaur. Maybe for a last time. Oh, don't flex it. Don't, don't flex don't the give us kill that. Fiora. <laughs> that, that's a bit of hope. I mean, having said that, that would be exciting. Let's go now, dude. Oh, ah. 
the thing is, right, th this is the difficulty of drafting against Billy Billy Gaming in this current iteration. You see all of those hovers. All of them are suitable picks. It's just what they're feeling at the moment. They go towards that cannon. I like the Nam more here because you already locked Vegar. This is not full AP burst. When you do have the virus and the Annie to burst out. Why Super Dome 4? Because CC solo names from BLG. So they probably have more flexibility in the AD role, so maybe... Maybe they thought of cases where it might change if the enemy picks a certain 4 or 5, but... On the whole, uh, you've got the Viego, the Cassante, and the Nautilus who, if they don't pick their angle well, if they go too deep, there is a cage, there are hooks, but, um, yeah, the, the, the order doesn't matter that much. CC combo Weibo, they will need to be so clean when it comes to team fighting, which they haven't done in the series so far. What they could have done, right, it doesn't make sense to not pick AD on 4, because you should just keep the anti flex and make it harder for the enemy to pick... Uh, Mid, so that part is troll. A lot of people talking about this team, and I mean, myself, Lyric, uh, I think, Sheen as well. We predicted uh, quite a big stomp. Yeah, it's easy one versus Tabe. But, so far, BLG have been the ones stomping them. Not only have they come through the RNG series fully primed and charged, BLG have come into this series continuing that momentum, continuing that style of play, no, tell me again, confidence like you. Confidence comes through repetition. Your Gao has been solid and out midding Xiaohu. And the bottom lane has been out doing light and crisp. Confidence, the purest form of confidence comes from a place of practice. Now on match point, Billy Billy Gaming only ever reached this point in their careers once before. It was in 2019 summer where they got 3 0 by top esports in the top four position it was a very different format a very different time in the league but this if they can win this series would be the second time in their history that they make the top four and it would give them a 50 percent chance of making msi that's cool warrington history rolling <laughs> our community is the coldest man such a task ahead of them how to be confident if you have the voice of a chipmunk? OMG making their highest finish, even though their run hasn't even ended yet in years. The thing is, anything can be turned against you. It's the belief in yourself needs to be unwavering. I'm sorry, Dave Varys, but I don't have the big bottle around. With all the experience on the roster, you expect a lot. There's a flash stretch line. Elk is down a flash. That's an explosive way to start, but a positive one for WBG. Okay, so Hex Flash there for Crisp. Of course, if you get bush control, you can sit in there, try and look for a flash auto, flash hook. Gives you some ability to play through. Flash for flash, but at least there's a Hex Flash on red side. Early damage. Diego. Is Thresh is going to be 100% lose ratio today? Weibo. They haven't really managed to blow open bot side in this series just yet, partly because they've been uh, falling apart throughout other oh. parts of the map, but they're looking again, really using this Nautilus level one. Oh, two AP in the bank. It's over, guys. Two AP in the bank. Uh, the thing is, it's like your own personal confidence needs to be unwavering. Starting on the other side of the map with that information from your gal, BOG, just a massive five head start here for their jungler. It is. So it's a it's a better sign for Weibo that uh, we have seen. For quite if there's any hint of doubt in, series, in yourself, early games, got those, uh, runes everyone's going to use it against you. If people can use you as a, um, like a jump battle to feel better about themselves, then people will. Either, which, yes, we have seen that in pro play. It's just going to be AP burst and Ben trying to lend himself towards those five v five scenarios. And again, in a comfortable when you are way, weak, appear strong. Yes. Great, whether the lane matchups been against him or not. Shouldn't play quite a, quite a pay The Art of War. Up there too is we are looking towards Castor on this bottom side. Now, picture in picture, did Wolves <laughs> When you are strong, appear weak. You know, I, th I think what they're doing this for is they're saying, he's level three. There's no flash on the AD carry. He's on the bot side Rude. of the map. Let's see what he can do here. See, Ben. Oh. Cold. Yeah, on that ward uh, across that river. So... Chris misses that hook in that bot side, makes things a little bit awkward, and now BLG, for once, having to deal with the... I will do a prediction video, yeah, but closer to the matches. It's Monday, for God's sake. Interesting that he doesn't go poke uh, Varus here. I think this was definitely a poke Varus game. Like, everything points towards this. Oh, close. He gets it. It was very close. 
close, but Casa is trying to build this bridge into a successful game. And slightly denied by Shun again. Because what's he going to do here? Is he going to flash over? He's... Uh, usually nothing happens in lane is really untrue. Stranger things to happen. Not to be the case at this point. Just looking for that. The Scar reward over the Tribrush. Get some vision at that point. And Shun... I don't know what games you are watching, but... Heading into the river again. His bot lane does not have... Shit does happen in lane. Very careful when... And I assure you that most players are good enough to leverage, like, item advantage into something significant. It's like that we've seen games where people have lost lane because they started Doran's Blade instead of Triple Pot, tri Triple Longsword, Triple Pot. The thing is, the issue, the difference between Mage items and, and Triple Longsword. So it's like, this is a pretty base buy by a Gao, right? Because he can't really get pressured by any, so I like it a lot in this matchup, right? But it's very matchup dependent. Yeah, the shower just based TP back. From Cassante with a damage reduction makes it a little bit hard to pull that one off. So as it stands, Casa getting the edge in the early jungle matchup. Lanes have not really felt the impact of this. How do all mid laners have the sixth sense knowing someone is in the bush? It's more about the wave positioning and understanding risk. It's like, do, do you gain anything through? Oh, this is, this is, this is interesting. For example, here, right? You can. Oh, wow. Wow, they burnt everything in the world for this. I don't know if it's worth it, honestly. The upside here for Weibo is that the wave is pushing uh, towards uh, them, so... I don't know if this is worth, guys. Like, Jauhu used all of his juice here. Like, this is not worth, in my opinion. It's like, look, Elk is a clean base too, man. They used, they used five summoners here to get this kill on uh, your boy Trash. But Crisp needs, uh, needs a wake-up call, I think. I think here El El Elk as well. Uh, it's, it's, it's fine, I will play it. I was thinking if she should look to root to Annie, but it doesn't matter because Annie's going to flash anyway and be in range. Yeah, if they killed Elk, things would look very different. But it's very hard, right? Because the, the Crisp misses spell. I guess it's very big for Billy Billy. Like Annie's play here was a big overreach. I see a lot of scaling coming through Nymera, and again with Finn and how he's going to play this game, it does feel like for BLG getting some of these objectives stacking up early, especially when it's Chemtech Dragon to start us off. It just feels like the value in BLG is still there despite that first blood going over. If they kill Elk, they wouldn't be able to push in right, and they would keep the freeze. So that would be like a big difference maker. But they couldn't kill Elk at all. Is a killer Annie? Probably just because of Annie's investment you want to have her, have her get a kill. So she doesn't lose power in the Vega lane. Because now at least her base is like pretty damn strong. Here comes your goat. Your goat. Your goat, man. Vi also catches mid, which is perfectly fine. She reaches level six. There's no Drake bottom side. I don't know. I think I think now in hindsight, uh, picking Nautilus on four is so fucking troll. Like, why do you reveal where Annie goes for no reason? <laughs> it is really troll. It is really troll. I'm so happy I hedged my. Uh, my, 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 minus 1.5. <laughs> but enough about that. That's losing. FF that game, guys. FF the game. Okay, do we have flay? No flay? Okay. Oh, nice hook. On! On! Is it Hilly Sang, dude? It's fucking Hilly Sang, mate. Bro, Honest Smurfing, dude. Honest 
So Infernum, when you pull that across the wave, gives you a lot of chakrams. <laughs> the onslaught of the Severum. Look how many chakrams he has stacked up. Honestly, Chris just should never pull that hook at that point. This is the strongest point in power for Nefelios once he kind of goes from the AoE of the Infernum. Kind of this hook on Annie is so clutch, dude. Boom. So clutch. This is a Boots Annie. She would reach. Ah, Crisp is burnt to a crisp. Very important death here. We get replay into death, but this also means that they're going to convert to Herald. That's dangerous because suddenly you can make a big power play with that Herald in whatever lane you should wish at that point. You've got to assume that Paul will be heading in towards the Valley thing is, LPL is filled with so much specialists. It's like, it's the region filled with the most specialists. So they have the largest amount of variance between splits and seasons. Yeah, Goat is like... Chinese BDD. Oh, Bin. Finally, that's what jungle attention looks like at the top side for the man, the myth, the legend, the shy. Not gonna get the kill, but Casa is now evolved. Oh no, not necessarily. It's like. Uh, I don't think the training regimen, it's like the training regimen is tough for, for all players. I don't know what it is in North America, but I know in Europe it's tough. In, in China it's tough, in Korea it's tough. I think in a lot of cases it's either you do that. It's like the, the work bal work life balance question. You know, it's very cute when people talk about that shit, you know. But if you want to be the best in the world at something, there is no work life balance. Your work becomes your life. There's no no balance at all. It is something, right? And at least we can start talking about a man who we don't normally talk about in this time. I am so happy when I can sleep in the office. When I can sleep in the office, what a relief. I save so much time. He's kind of going to be the, the person looking to make the, the knockout flow, especially with something like a Varus Arrow adding into that equation too. If Weibo it's like, see, sport athletes, right? Be careful at that point. Weibo gets first into the it's like, let's say Olympic level athletes. Combos, they, they have to live the job, you know? They have to eat, they have to train, they have to sleep. There's no room to disrupt any balance. Welcome back, Warrington. Your goat is just hovering. Good to see you, Joe Mama. 4-20-69. Good to see you. This is a trade onto the Rift Herald side, but uh, it's not too shabby. Very important here that Vega actually goes mid and pushes, so he forces a reaction out of Annie. I think... Yeah, never mind, Vega spotted. The second issue Steph Curry Sim is that you're just white. You're just too white. Obviously, I'm, I'm joking, guys. I hope I don't get taken out of context. <sighs> okay. I don't know what they are hovering into here. Here comes the bin. Crispy is dead too. I think it's a Totalini angle. If you're Caucasian, you don't have culture. Yeah, he's got the spirit of Christian trying to pick off another kill in that one fight. The Shy, left alone with this top side, but Bin, huge value out of the two kills in the cleanup. Guys, I'm trolling, I'm trolling, I'm trolling. I'm trolling, it's a joke, it's a joke. Obviously, I'm being sarcastic. It's just, it was a funny take. 
across the board. It's an evenish early game, which we haven't seen really from the first two games. It has felt like BLG have found advantages somewhere or another across the map. So this is still an improvement for Weibo, but they have needed. No, I'm just I'm just referencing to uh, what's his name. And so let's look at where. Um, why, why do I want to call him James Franco? What's his name? Jacob Wolf. <laughs> James Franco. He was just saying that LCS lacks diversity. When you got players from all over the world, you know? No, it's it's like Jacob Wolf. Obviously, him having a shitty opinion about something doesn't make his work worse or something. You know, it's like it's cool. He's, he he did have two pretty rough takes. It, it's funny because it's like culture is not black and white but <laughs> he literally sees it black and white which is funny because it's both from the analogy and also from the standpoint of the literal meaning of this <laughs> but yeah let's move on guys let's focus on this game What's actually happened this game? So basically we had some good moves bot, Annie uh, sacrificed a lot of her tempo, your goat roam top and got some kills. Okay, Annie saving all the this. This is a freebie. Not sure we went from replay into this, so I, it's hard for me to judge what's going on. I just saw Vega catching bot wave and I don't think it's like they were three in top side river. It was very strange. I don't like that Bilibili is pushing for this, but at least Kisanta is on bot with no TP. That's a good turn. Okay, Bin. And Bin is just the best player in the world. Bin is actually just... Bin is just the best player in the world. Yeah, in my mind here it's like oh you killed trash because it's like the, the mountain fight is looking rough either way right because um the, the, the mountain fi fight looked rough either way they killed trash they kept any tibbers and i was like okay it looks looks like a, a moment i don't know how varus became so isolated because he just abandoned his hobbies on the play and billy billy capitalized No exhaust is griefing, by the way. Nah, man. It's exhaust is good against cannon, but you want you want Nautilus to play exhaust or what? Just have no kill pressure, bot. Sounds great, man. Damn. Okay. If they want to play through pick combos like the cannon over a wall, like the thresh, like the vine, like the Vagoth pages, this is such a big moment for them. And Weibo, I don't think they understand the implications of sticking on that dragon for so long. Mountain Drake does give a lot of stats though. So and on, on, on like a from a strategic point of view, for sure, losing mid two materials is rough. But from a st statistical point of view, and the gold that you generate from the mid and uh, the mid two thirds. I think that the Drake outweighs that. If it was closer, would be a potential game five. Would be back and forth between BLG and Weibo. I thought that today Weibo would come in looking like a stronger team, but they've obviously been sitting on the bench and back to the bench. I don't think it's uh, quite good though that uh, they 
User if set up, they were late to the Drake, the user if set up to try to win the position, the enemy didn't bite and they just commit. No point uh, trying to fetch against the enemy team. I think Karsa never needs to flip burgers in his life. I think Karsa is sitting on so much money, this guy is completely the vibing. And he's a bit too tanky with all the bitches. I think here uh, trying to contest two neutrals at the same time is a little bit too much. This is mental, what I'm seeing on my screen. Oh, crisp. Crisp, son. 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 I think these salary caps are cap, by the way, like... You don't think that they can pay players more money if they wanted to? Yo, here's a streaming contract on the side. Uh, on the side. You have to stream one hour a month and you get 200k. Boom. Salary cap. You know what? We're gonna pay your mom to be an advisor, okay? We're gonna pay your mom to be an advisor for Weibo. The shy, we're gonna pay your mom, your uncle. They all get 200k each. Thank God Chris hits the the cliff. Oh, red white, red white, red white. You know, this champ Vegar actually has decent damage on Nash. Ooh. Wow. Honestly, Billy Billy is so fucking good, by the way. <laughs> like, they are insanely good. <laughs> they are so good. They're actually insanely good. <laughs> they are really, really good. Holy fuck, dude. I know who the problem is. No, it's not the shy. So <laughs> <laughs> Thank you very much, Kavaiso Kratis. Appreciate it. Good to see you. I hope all is well. He's not saying anything. Yo, Billy Billy's played fantastic this series. I'm not gonna lie. Yeah, okay, never mind. Damn. Okay. He, he just overpushed it. His timing was bad. 35 seconds to Drake. Maybe they're gonna get some odds off of this mountain. Okay. Elk is juicing some DPS. Elk has no damage. And they're trying to dive the, the shy here on mid. My man's got endless MR. Oh, Weibo is looking to f get a big lead here. They got some fish in the barrel. Varus ult mids. Soon, soon, Elka's ult. Elka's ult can be a big game changer here. They don't have information on Jauhu. Uh, they have Nash recall. Let's see if they're gonna fight this. I think the Shai can face check. Oh, big, big Nautilus ult. Oh, nice Gale Force. Oh, 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 Elk! Oh, Elk! Elk! Holy Elk is so good! What the fuck? Damn, Elk! Oh, Elk! Oh! Jesus! Damn! Wow! Wow! That is crazy, man! Wow! Yo, Elk! Holy wow! That is nice, dude. 
Let me see that again. Rewind, rewind that tape. Yo, Elk just, he went Super Saiyan, dude. Oh my god, let's look at this again. Reload it. Oh, look at this. Look at that Gale Force. Gale Force. Boom. Flash. Huge ult on the back line. Pressures. Zones them off. Heels for Yagao. Keeps hitting. Conqueror. Fully stacked. Crispy. More like Bob Marley Crispy. Bro, crisp. Oh, look at that cheeky smile, man. Enjoy yourself. Enjoy yourself. This is a moment to remember, Elk. Wow. By the way, how many fights with bad numbers did Billy Billy like Houdini figured out? That's not Elk? What do you mean that's not Elk? This is not Elk? Why are they showing him? The Wow. Get it done. BLG storms towards the Nexus. And my mirror for the first time in four years. BLG will move. It's actually one of the worst Nautilus games of all time. So it has nothing to do with the scoreline. Has nothing to do with the scoreline. It's just a plain, simple, like plain and simple juice. Incredible series by BLG on the day. They move on, of course. Face one of our very top JDG beyond them. Wow. A terrifying matchup for them in some ways, but it will also be an opportunity for Yagao to face the team which he won his championship with just last summer. History abounds in so many matchups in the LPL, but as we cut things down to our elite few, remaining scenarios where they could end up at that international event, more seeds. At MSI for the major regions gives them more opportunities to see themselves through to London. I cannot believe what was once firm favorites, right? They're not first seed, they're not first, they're favorites to go to MSI, but every team looked at as a serious opportunity to do so. They couldn't even take a single game off of Billy Billy Gaming. This was the most disappointing series and the most disappointing, excuse me, one of the most disappointing games we've seen from Weibo just far this split for a team that is. A super team. Nightmare, this is a team that, again, you look at the accolades internationally, this team should be going to internationals or at least getting so close to, but not a single game against BLG. And, and look, having said that, BLG were by far the better team. That's crazy. The respect. But Weibo couldn't even step up to the plate today, and I think that would be the most disappointing thing of all. When you also have Easy Hoon as your coach, who... Damn. Yeah, I'm so happy I hedged. <laughs> you know? <laughs> After game one, I hedged with a little 3 0 Billy Billy. <laughs> I, I, <laughs> I was like, oh, fuck. These players not looking that crispy, man. Blind picks a power pick like that cannon. Do you have a suitable response to it? And if you are going to hold counter pick, you know, against him, do you have the champion pools to take on all comers at that point? Bin has been the best top laner in the LPL playoffs I have seen yep. so far. Now we're waiting for some top laners later into it. We are going to look at maybe Zipper if he gets some of his champions. We'll be looking at Ala with his huge champion pool as well. The level of top lane in the LPL I think has improved quite a lot over spring when you've had some of these top laners come online. That is an absurd thing. As you can see, <laughs> this is test for the series. Let's do the rounds, guys. Let's do the rounds. Let's let's have a check-in. Let's do the rounds. Let's let's knock on everybody's door. Okay, Drew, you okay? You okay? But man's listening to What is he listening to, bruv?
All right. Cheers, man. Cheers. All right. Both of them are ultimate grinders, always playing fucking solo queue. They're never just like the, the guy that, uh, like, he doesn't play solo queue, but, you know, he he's just good on stage when it matters. Like, that guy will be good for a little bit. They will never be good. They'll never be one of, like, the best players for multiple metas for the future. Now, in terms of the idea of, like, oh, we can't burn people out or have unreasonable working hours. Yeah, you can if that's your decision, that the number one thing that you care the Holy most base, they actually talk about what we talked about, guys. ...well-being of your competitors. But you know what the problem is? It's sort of implied within sports and esports that that's not the number one goal and never was. I think it's even a dishonest and disingenuous premise. Like, when you watch American football... Elk is the goat? Yeah, it was really nice from Elk. ...the number one concern be the physical health of the players. It couldn't, because the sport itself should never play a single down or snap, if that is true. Players are getting potentially injured and damaging at all times. So the question instead becomes what is the time for us to dedicate yourself to play this particular game? So, in terms of if you're an esports player, you can have stress. You can have times you feel upset and scared and broken, and times you feel elated and euphoric. And top you can have all these things. It's going to be part and parcel of the career. So, it can't be the idea that you can never feel anything negative, physical or mental. The question becomes what is too much? Boom and bias. You better. Bro, don't do that shit, man. Don't do that shit. Don't do that shit where, oh, I heard this one thing about this one person, so I am going to uh, just be do the lazy thing and let that be my 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 thing, you know? If you don't have an opinion about Thorin, don't take your opinion from other people. Protect yourself from this. Don't let anyone else shape your own personal narrative. Just accept that sometimes you just don't know, and that's okay. You don't need to have an opinion about everything, because this is how people quickly, 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 you know? That's literally the system. It's like, oh, if you're mentally not able to handle it, we're just going to replace you with somebody else that can mentally. I listen to this podcast sometimes and don't like his opinions 75% of the time. Fuck work-life balance, man. What is this shit when you're trying to be the GOAT? Work is life. Hell yeah. Yes, baby. 48 streaming. 48 hours streaming together, Yamato. That's yeah. like and you are 48 hours streaming this weekend. Because we're out here trying to be the fucking GOATs of content creation. And they were like, we're not, we're gonna work harder <laughs> rather than harder. And that was a real thing. And the psychology trainers. Which Let me fly out to Texas. They could have used all this. We're doing 48 hour stream, by the way. Just like you would in business. Right? We're doing 48 hour stream, 100. percent Specialist shit that no one else can do as well as you, and you, you just destroy the whole market. Oh, but but the thing is, it's like you don't need to even, you don't need to agree with with, you don't need to agree with anyone's uh, uh, opinions. It's like there is. No one. There's no one out there that I agree on everything, man. No one. Let me tell you this, yeah? Nobody out there that I agree with on everything. And he picks up a, uh, you know, well-earned extra point on the MVP count. He picks up a red. That's on the Aphelios as well. Keep in mind the whole reckless thing. Bro, it's so low-hanging fruit. Let me tell you this. Let me tell you, let me tell you guys a little secret about Thorin, okay? He knows way more way more than he reveals he knows inside stories the same way i know inside stories and he is building building skyscrapers okay for the day that the truth comes out and he can say yo motherfuckers I told you so. And this is the brilliancy. This is the brilliancy of Thorin. He knows way more because people trust him with information. He's not going to just say whatever the fuck people tell him. He's not going to do that. But he's going to shape his opinions around them. That is the genius of it. And he does that super, super good and sells it super, super good. One thing that I, the, the, the main thing that I appreciate with Thorin, Monte Cristo, uh, I will dominate, Richard Lewis too. These guys are so damn consistent. I know exactly who they are. I